Hey YouTube, welcome back to our channel. My name is Elena. And I'm Bjorn. And we are Viking Age reenactors and living historians here to talk with you about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So today we have one more interview for you guys, uh, and this time it's with the brand art director for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Raphael Lacoste. Thanks so much for, for coming out nice and early for us. It's my pleasure. Could you, just to start off, uh, like tell us a little bit about yourself and your role with the uh, development of Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Sure, my name is Raphael Lacoste. Uh, I'm working as art director on uh, the new game, uh, Sea Valhalla. I also have a role on the franchise, so I work also you know, on the different uh, products we make, uh, comics, uh, book covers, art books, and stuff like that. And sometimes when we have also side projects on the brand, I'm working also supporting the teams. Awesome. That's awesome. All right, so what are some technical challenges that you faced when designing this open world and the different components that represent this as a distinctly Viking Age environment? So the the challenge we had, uh, and I know I think you're historians, so uh, or you you're interested into that. So it's uh, it's finding balance between um, the fantasy and uh, the accuracy and the credibility of the environment. Uh, so very early on on the conception, we worked with uh, a few uh, experts, and uh, I, I worked myself myself with uh, Jean Claude Galvin, who is a French, he's a researcher, but he's also uh, an illustrator and, and an artist. So it's it's a it's the perfect you know uh, blend between um, the historical knowledge, but also uh, the talents of making building environments and creating, creating like interesting. Um, cities, towns, and see how we, we can play with the scale, the credibility of uh, the details. And uh, that was very, very fascinating because when you, you, you build what you want to uh, make uh, the player dream, you want to, to deliver the fantasy, but at the same time, you want to feel the credibility of the world. So that was, I would say the challenge was to, to bring to life a very interesting world, varied, exciting, but also credible at the same time. So while exploring the world, uh, we found vast amounts of carvings from longhouses to rune stones to even some included in Eivor's ship. Um, what were some of the historical inspirations behind that art style? So, uh, so we, we had a chance to, uh, to go to Norway. By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm from Europe, I'm from France, and I, I went uh, for a few hikes in Norway. I love this country, uh, in the Lofoten Islands, particularly because I love the landscape, it's just incredible. Uh, we came back with the team. Uh, we did uh, we did a, a scouting trip in England and in Norway. Uh, we spent some time in uh, in a longhouse. We had all the reenactment uh, <laughs> festival. It was it was great. We even had to 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 drive the drag car to to uh, do uh, to practice uh, you know bow and arrows and uh, play with an axe. And it was that was very fun actually. We, we broke actually uh, the wooden piece of the axe. <laughs> <laughs> even reached uh, the watermelon with that. So it was. It was uh, no, we, we were like uh, pretty pathetic, but it was it was very fun as an experience, and so we took many photos uh, being on, on on the site. It's not um, only um, historical pieces, but also recreations. So we took inspiration from the scouting trip, uh, from a lot of books. We we bought some uh, some some reference for the engravings, and uh, I know that it's it's a huge challenge because you know we make we make uh, an open world game. It's it's pretty huge. Uh, we have to to find the, the perfect balance between details and being able to populate a huge world. So we, it's it's always like finding the perfect balance between having a lot of description details, but at the same time being able to, to offer the variety and the, the large scale of uh, of Norway and England. So that's uh, that's uh, how we 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 balance detail. Yeah, so that actually leads us into the next question. So while doing the gameplay yesterday, um, we noticed that there were also a vast amount of ruins um, around the world, a lot of them Roman ruins, and some of them yeah. stand alone and others are uh, kind of built into the more contemporary architecture of the Viking Age. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about designing that overlap between the two cultures and how that kind of marries together? Yeah, so I would say that was one uh, of the very exciting uh, elements uh, uh, of the world building of Valhalla because uh, for sure we know that uh, back in the, the ninth century, uh, there was a few Roman rooms, but they were not that uh, huge as we have in the game. So you need to know that the team is always doing the homework. They always, you know, we always read books, uh, we talk to historians, and we make creative choice. We make decisions for the game. So maybe a few historians will be shocked, you know, by saying, um, you know, over the top uh, Roman rooms. 
but uh, I think for the for the good, for the game, for the experience, for the fantasy, I think it's it's great. And also, it's also in the visual direction. We wanted to have a very romantic direction uh, in in England. We really wanted to push this kind of romanticism of uh, seeing the beautiful Roman rooms uh, with you know overgrown vegetation taking over the rooms and bring back also verticality in the game because it's in AC it's very important to bring back the verticality, be able to to do the rich icons to. Uh, to uh, to explore the world not only on the horizontal level but also on the vertical level. So um, something that, as you were mentioning is very interesting is to to have also this cultural clash between you know the paganism but also the, the Christian world, uh, also between the ancient world, the ancient Roman ruins and the actual Saxon uh, uh, life. So that was a very interesting contrast to create. Also a lot of mystery because for the people living there when they were you know living or squatting in London. They would see these incredible, you know, huge statues and rooms. Like, who created this, this, you know, this kind of civilization? They, they, they even didn't know who, who were responsible for this kind of architectural elements. So I, I love the idea of, the, you know, the mystery brought by this kind of uh, mysterious structures, living there, standing there, and and with the people a bit scared and wondering, you know, who built that and how did they do that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think it, I honestly, um, like you mentioned, the the amount of the Roman ruins may be like a little bit too much for historical context, but it works, especially when you start considering, you know, the vertical aspect of the game. I think you got lost yeah. in that a yeah. couple of times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just remembering yeah. it. Yeah, I kind of forgot halfway through that, oh yeah, this is Assassin's Creed, I should start looking up more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's always a challenge, you know, when we, when we need to... Uh, to uh, to bring this visual variety and you know it's the dark age and uh, logically you would just have like uh, hay roofs uh, very small buildings even if you don't have churches you have like very tiny houses and 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 when you create a world when you want to have very interesting exploration loop when you want to tease the player with some visual compositions you, you need to uh, make creative choice that could go sometime against the the, the historical aspect of the of, of the era so. It's always, you know, for the good of the game, and we know what we we, what we change. Absolutely. Um, to kind of just quickly build off of that a little bit, so so you mentioned that you wanted to include a lot more um, of like Roman uh, ruins and things to kind of add a little bit more romanticism to to the environment. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think that's a really interesting choice because a lot of people associate the Viking Age and the Dark Age um, with being this very kind of dismal, dirty, grungy kind yeah. of kind of life. But in reality, you know, we, we have a fair amount of of um, you know, knowledge to say that it, it was quite the contrary. You know, it was very vibrant. Um, you know, there were a lot of colors and yeah. things. So did that kind of help you when you were going into it to, to bring that, um, you know, to life more and make it more of like a vibrant, really like, um, like romantic kind of, uh, kind of world? Yeah. Or? yeah, that's, that's a very good point, what you, what you bring there. Uh, uh, um, I, I did also the exercise on origins uh, because I, I really don't like, uh, you know, when the visual direction of historical settings is using brown and uh, desaturated blue. I, I don't like that. I, I like when you, you think about, uh, you know, actually in this time people could wear colors and could see colors also around them. It, it just, it's not because it's the dark ages that the trees were gray and, and the, the mud was <laughs> everywhere and it was raining all the time and it was foggy. And for sure, we had seasons. We had uh, fall, <laughs> winter, summer, we had butterflies and <laughs> all this kind of stuff. So uh, what you say is is very true. Uh, we know that the Vikings used, you know, paintings, colors on the Drakars. Uh, they, they loved, uh, you know, decoration. They were very skilled at engraving. Uh, they had a lot of, lot of knowledge for the, for the crafting of different elements, decoration. And um, for, for England, I really wanted to take this direction, um, I would say almost the opposite direction of what we know sometimes in the TV series, uh, like this era, uh, where it's more desaturated, where it's more like gray, and, and use as much as we can vibrant colors. And uh, also it's, it's interesting because you can create, for the period, you can uh, create a mental map of the world because you, you will see several regions uh, associated with different biomes and different seasons. For instance, you go to Wessex, it will be a lush summer uh, with uh, butterflies and beautiful sunlight and incredible scratched cyrus, white uh, clouds, uh, the white caves of Dover, um, also uh, green grass everywhere. When you go to the Sashire, it's going to be more like a dry fall autumn, uh, very vibrant colors. And I will try to create landmarks of um, 
uh, of biome. So using this kind of visual direction, you kind of kind of orient yourself in the map. You know, okay, I was there maybe two hours ago. I had a mission there, and you kind of figure out where you you're placed in the world because uh, of the use of these different biomes and and, and color palettes and moods. So there's a few landmarks that are man-made. Um, uh, cities, uh, you know, like monuments, and some would be more natural. Like uh, I'm going through the the old ground, uh, old ground, uh, oak forest with the red leaves, and there's only these kind of trees there. Or it could be the the birch trees with yellow leaves, and the ground would be covered with the uh, bluebells. And it's a, it's a very specific uh, tone we, we try to to use with the natural world, but also the the man-made world. So it's it's an interesting evolution. That's awesome. And I, and I honestly love that because, um, like you both are saying, uh, a lot of people think of the Viking Age as this like grimy, you know, everyone's wearing brown colors yeah. and everything, but the Vikings did love yeah, their yeah. colors. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think we even noticed the, um, like you mentioned the seasons as well, kind of changing and having, um, you know, stronger influence in, in certain regions. I think, uh, you were the one to point that out quickly too. You know, when we started our gameplay yesterday, um, you know, we started in, in kind of the Southern region, it was more of like a kind of green, Sorry. luscious kind of summary. And then as we, kind of moved through the story, it, it started to turn a little bit more into fall and you saw some of those more autumn co colors come out and mm -hmm. it was just a very like natural yeah. and, and interesting transition to kind of take notice of that all of a sudden and go, oh, that's... I even saw some snow yeah. at one point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also a challenge because you, you would say, okay, we have static seasons, we have almost three different seasons in the same country, it's a bit strange. But I think when you play the game, it's not that much of a problem because you have the time to make the transition between summer to, to fall to early winter. And also, it's really, it's. I think like visually, it's really interesting to to have this kind of mental map of the of the world with the different seasons, and it's really helping for the variety of the world. Absolutely, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so so let's talk quickly a little bit about uh, character design. Um, so the yeah. clothing for the characters takes a lot of cues from what we know. Um, of Viking Age fashion, but also takes a fair amount of creative liberties as well. Um, can you talk us through the process of how you got these looks developed? Yeah, so uh, for the character design, we always work with the the, the, the script writers. We, we we need to to know the value of the characters. We need to, to get really uh, immersed in the story of the characters. So it's not like uh, when you you, you build a, a world location, you look at the reference, you look at a scouting trip, um, you, you have a lot of creative freedom as an artist. When, when you design a character, you, you have a client, the client will be the story and, and also the script writer. So we, we, we talk a lot with, uh, with Darby and uh, the other guys to, uh, to see how we can represent the characters and how we can give life to a, a charismatic character and, and you know, what, what is his background. So we need to, re to reflect that in the face and, and in, in also the outfits. So uh, there's, there's um, one direction that would be like when you, you have one of the main characters that is really connected to a story and then when you have the main character who, who will be played, you know, by, by, by the player and where you have to make sure that you want to play this girl or this guy, you want to, to spend time with him. So that's a huge challenge and it takes years usually, uh, you know, before having the final direction for, for, the main, for the main hero. And also we have all the customization, so it's also a big challenge. Um, to, to try to match different pieces and make sure it's it's fun to play, it's interesting for the gameplay, but also it looks good, badass, interesting, charismatic, and you want to spend time with this character. So it's um, it's uh, yeah, it's a big challenge, and we have an amazing team uh, delivering fantastic assets, and it's uh, yeah, it's a great adventure. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, it was just it was really cool to kind of um, you know go through that kind of immersion and, and notice the differences. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, notice the differences in kind of costuming and everything as well, you know, because um, we spent a lot of time going through the cities and just kind of seeing, you know, typical folk, you know, going about their daily lives just very simply. Um, but then also meeting some of these historical characters like Uba, for example, was, was really striking to me because, I mean, just looking at him, you knew that he was an important figure based just based on his, his costuming alone, you know, um, he was very well dressed up in, in these very vibrant colors. But in addition, he also wore a lot of his a lot of his wealth. Um, you know, and arm rings and, and jewelry and things. And that was very much like a, a Viking trait. You know, you kind of showed off your status based yeah. on based on what you wore. Um, so it's just a great little detail to kind of just see thrown in there and, and have such a striking impact on the gameplay. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's I would say, like, a, that's the big challenge we had as a team to, when you create a, a very large scope, very large world, you, you have to uh, to set priorities and what kind of character have to be like really memorable and the one who we need to say maybe more in the background and, and say, you know, we need to populate the world, but also we need to have, you know, these characters who will really, really stand out. And we, we put a lot of efforts on these ones 
so that's uh, that's uh, that's good. You, you saw for for Uba and the other guys. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, how we try to set the priorities on the production of the characters. So one last question that we have for you. Um, yeah. While working on the game, um, what was something that you personally were interested in learning about the Viking Age? Um, I would say that there's, as I said before, there's a there's a connection for me uh, with uh, you know, the Viking Age and, and the culture because I love uh, Scandinavia and I love Scandinavia. I love, I love the the Norwegian landscape. Uh, I, I spent time there. I did, did a lot of hikes in the Northern Islands. So that's. Uh, that's just by the setting, by uh, you know the opportunity to live there, to spend some time there. I was really fascinated by by these uh, these cultures. Um, I really wanted to learn more about uh, their daily life and and see also the good side of the game because these characters are not only violent people, you know, cutting heads. Uh, I think there's also a lot of subtleties and they're like very interesting people. Um, there's also, you know, there's uh, the fighting game, you know, it's uh, not only about being brutal, violence and, and killing people and uh, raping people. Uh, so I, I really like to see the other side of, so, of the Vikings and learn about the different jobs. Um, you know, people are crafting leather, crafting woods and making amazing, you know, buildings. So you, you saw the church and we know it's not from the era, but we use the church because it's a very iconic element of uh, also of the Scandinavian um, architecture. And, and we 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 were very fascinated by recreating these kind of monuments, uh, only created by you know wooden pieces and engravings. So um, it was the, the kind of stuff we really love to to explore and to 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 create in this game. That's awesome. I think that was one of the first things that we noticed about the game, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the first trailer that we oh, watched. Um, half. Yeah. 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 That was the first yeah. thing that we noticed is how much. Um, focus there was on the fact that they weren't just readers that there was a greater story behind that as well yeah. and that was really really nice to see for mm -hmm. us absolutely and i really hope uh, we can see that also through the game it's not only about uh, violence but also about like real human people with a lot of uh, you know sensitivity mm -hmm. yeah yeah i definitely think it comes through especially um even the bit of the gameplay that we did yesterday, you could definitely tell that mm. you can just hang out and listen to stories and songs and see people crafting. And, yeah. you know, we didn't get a chance to go fishing, but you can do that. Yeah. Flighting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, you know, there's just so much to do. It's great. Yeah. 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 And I think by getting the game, you can also choose what kind of Viking you want to be. And that's uh, also giving the freedom to the player to, to if he wants to be the Viking guy, you can, you can do that. But you can also spend time, like if you're like, like me, like a, person who likes to just chill in the environment, uh, play with the currents <laughs> and, you know, uh, wait for the sunrise on the mountain. I can wait like for 20 minutes for the sunrise and use the photo mode to take like amazing photos. That's you no, know, the kind of stuff you can also do and enjoy in the game or just do hunting and stuff like that. So uh, this is the stuff I like uh, usually, but uh, you can take all the past you want. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of our future videos. And we will see you in the next one.